One of the unfortunate things is prior to these technologies or these companies starting to uh, recycle them is the fact that even though they're not supposed to end up in the landfill, many of them are and have been. What I think they're starting to see is that you may have a catastrophic, a catastrophic event like a hailstorm um, and suddenly you have thousands or hundreds of thousands of solar panels that need to be re recycled immediately. And so I think that's one of the main shifts that has people saying, hey, we need to do something about this. And I think it's refreshing to see that the industry is is doing something about it. It's in its infancy, uh, but we're making strides. I'm excited because yeah. if you would have asked me two years ago, I remember we used to have customers asking us, hey, what about solar panel recycling? Our answer kind of was, well, you know, your solar panel should be around for 30, 40, 50 years. That's way down the road. Don't worry about it. And that answer, worked for a decade and it's just not going to work anymore. Today we're going to be discussing a really important topic in our industry and that is the recycling of, of solar panels. You know we we work in an industry Larry that's a, a green or renewable industry and uh, it would be foolish of us not to be a little introspective and, and, and look within, make sure that the industry as a whole, and we are doing what we can to make sure that our manufacturing is processes are green to make sure that our products at the end of their life are disposed of in the best way possible. And to try and make sure we have those circular economies within our industry as we're promoting and selling something that's renewable. Also good to note that I think most certainly in the United States, uh, but possibly across the globe, that the majority of solar panels have been installed in the last decade or so. And so they haven't really reached their end of life yet. But in the next 10 or 15 years, we're going to see solar panels that typically come with 25 year warranties, maybe a little less, maybe a little more start to, if not reach the end of their life, look to be replaced at some point. And there's going to be a substantial demand for recycling, much more than the demand exists right now. And so uh, there was this great article on Solar Power World uh, called Solar Panel Recyclers Pioneer New Methods for Greening the Industry. And we're going to dump, uh, dive into that article now. But I think before we do that, Larry, let's talk about the components of a solar panel and what's made up, what's inside a solar panel that we're talking about being recycled. Yeah, and the article touches on that briefly, but you have the glass, that's, yep. that's a main component. Um, you have the aluminum frame. Um, it talks a lot about silver. So yep. silver's a component. Um, and actually the article even mentions that potentially at some point in the near future, uh, solar panels might be a really large percentage of the silver industry in the world. Uh, there's a number of other components. And one of the things I think that's important here, Warren, is that we get some pushback from time to time, people saying things like, hey, you know, will harmful products from the solar panel leach into the ground at, at my ground mount location? Yeah. Um, you know, is this bad for the environment? Um, and the answer really is no, as long as it's recycled properly. It's just like like anything else, as long as it's recycled properly and disposed of properly, there's there's no issues. And I agree with you. This this is massive in the industry. And I think one of the challenges now that we seem to be overcoming, Larry, is it being cost effective to recycle solar panels. So not only are we becoming more mindful of renewable components in the manufacturing process and how to do that. A little greener, but also when it comes to recycling them and be able to recycle them at scale in a cost-effective manner. Yeah, so I think I think one of the things that the industry noticed is just like you're saying, a lot of panels were installed maybe 10 to 15 years ago, and so it's time to start thinking about you know solar panel recycling in a completely different way. Um, and I, I think I think the main recognition, Warren, was that there, there's not there's no one out there doing this. You know, there's yeah. no one recycling solar panels. There, there's no need for it. At least there wasn't a need for it. Um, but now all of a sudden, what I think they're starting to see is that you may have a catastrophic, a catastrophic event like a hailstorm. Um, and suddenly you have thousands or hundreds of thousands of solar panels that need to be re recycled immediately. And so I think that's one of the main shifts that has people saying, hey, we need to do something about this.
One of the things that I found interesting is that they're looking at multiple locations. Uh, they're looking at Texas, Arizona, and Georgia as their three main locations now. And this is for uh, solar cycle. They have locations in Texas and Arizona and looking at one in Georgia. But then there was also a comment made, Warren, about spinning up additional facilities as needed if there's a massive event that happens at a solar farm and it makes more sense to recycle them closer rather than farther um, from from the uh, the actual solar farm itself, which tells me that capacity for this kind of operation is going to grow and can grow and can grow economically if they're talking about, hey, it, maybe it makes more sense to just start a brand new facility close to that solar farm rather than shipping everything across the, the country. Um, so yeah. that, that was pretty cool to, to see that. Right. And in addition to solar cycle, there's solarpanelrecycling.com and they have plants, a couple of them in North Car Carolina, Salisbury, North Carolina, and some um, processor outside of Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia, and then also in Texas in Breckenridge that they plan to open shortly. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's exciting to see. And I think the reason why a lot of them are South and Southwest is because that's where a lot of these solar farms are currently. Um, so we're in the Northeast. So, you know, the closest one to us is probably North Carolina or Georgia, but I think that's going to change over time. I think there's going to be more and more of these types of facilities, um, you know, that uh, where, where it makes sense to, to recycle these solar panels. One of the unfortunate things is prior to these technologies or these companies starting to uh, recycle them is the fact that even though they're not supposed to end up in the landfill, many of them are and have been. Right, right. And that was that was what we did in the early days, Warren. Yeah, you know, there was there was no other option. There was nothing else to do in a lot of cases. And they ended up in a landfill. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, uh, certain types of solar modules, according to this article, can be considered solid or hazardous waste um, for the presence of lead and cadmium telluride. Yeah. And, you know, states are are saying, no way, you know, this this can't go into the landfill. We, we've got to do something different. Correct. And we actually we put together a video about that several months ago, talking about most of the panel, the monocrystalline and uh, polycrystalline panels that we use today. Uh, don't contain the cadmium telluride uh, and mm -hmm. very minimal amounts of lead. Um, but in the so uh, thin film solar, uh, those do, even though it's encapsulated and not supposed to leak, it's still a concern and most certainly shouldn't be ending up in the landfills. Right, right. I think I think the challenge uh, that, you know, we, we might say, well, why didn't, Solar panel recycling happened 10 years ago. I think that I think one of the biggest challenges that this article addresses is that you can't just shred a solar module and call it good. Um, you know, they talk about you have to the encapsulate bonds, the interior elements of the solar panel together. You have to find a way to take that apart in a manner where you can still capture the products that are within that encapsulate. So it's it's a it's a little bit of a complex process. But again, I think with scale, I think we're going to find uh, that become more and more cost effective. Unfortunately, right now, to get it recycled, we have to pay to get it recycled, um, to get it there. It's not a significant, a super significant cost, but it's still a cost. So we have to pay for the shipping and we have to pay to get it, the module processed. Eventually, you know, is there a potential that at some point this is cost effective enough where you, where you don't have to pay? Um, you know, that, that, that's a potential. And I suspect that that will be the hope and the expectation that there will be sufficient demand, enough solar panels either being damaged or reaching the end of their life that, and if combined with the fact that there will be multiple local recycling centers for solar panels, that not only would you not have to pay, but these recycling centers could be profitable and sustainable. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, one of the big questions is, well, you know, do we really need this right now? You know, why, why do solar panels need to be recycled? And the article addresses that as well. You know, there's some some products with manufacturing defects, uh, weather events. We talked about that already, you know, catastrophic yep. hailstorms or something like that. Shipping damage, damage during construction, um, repowering, decommissioning. So repowering, Warren, is when um, a solar farm says our solar panels aren't, they're not efficient enough 
we can install new solar panels and get you know more efficiency and more life out of our system. So that's repowering, which happens some. It's not happening a lot yet, but it's starting to happen a little bit. Um, and then decommissioning is just simply saying, hey, panel's end of life. We're going to get rid of it and uh, either reinstall a new system here or return this this location back to its its uh, former use. And I think it's important to add, Larry, when we're talking about repowering, even panels that we installed maybe five, 10 years ago that had 25 year or 30 year warranties. At the end of that 25 or 30 year warranty, those panels, even when you account for degradation, assuming they're not damaged by weather or other issues, should still be producing 80 to 85, 90% mm -hmm. of their original production. And there's probably no reason for them to be taken out of service at that point in time and that you could reasonably expect them to continue to produce into your 35, 40, maybe even longer before it's cost effective to replace them. Absolutely. Yeah. When, when we first started installing solar panels and, and I still feel this way, I think a lot of systems will be on a roof or on the ground for 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. Um, now there, I think where we may run into this more often is maybe they have a 25 year lease agreement with the landowner or maybe they have a 25 year PPA agreement. And at the end of that time, the landowner says, I'm done. I want this returned to its original use. Um, so there might be cases like that. Um, but all this more than just points to the reality that in the next decade, we're going to need to do something. And I think it's refreshing to see that the industry is is doing something about it. It's in its infancy, uh, but we're making strides. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And we see companies like Q-Cells. You know, Q-Cells, I believe, is working with SolarCycle. Yep. Uh, Canadian Solar just put out a, uh, a, a press release recently saying that they're working to with a recycling company to, to recycle their solar panels at end of life. And I think the idea is you recycle our solar panels and we'll use, you know, the materials from those panels for, for new panels. But whether the materials made for new panels or used for something else, it doesn't matter as long as it's it's continually being used and being recycled in, into, some, into something new. Yeah. So I would say in a nutshell, Larry, that recycling has been a challenge in the past, um, and it is going to become a bigger challenge, but the industry's moving in the right direction. Um, certainly in our manufacturing processes and what's inside a solar panel as well as what to do with them at the end of life or if they get damaged in the interim. And uh, it seems as if the manufacturers are on board with embracing that renewable mm -hmm. cycle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm excited because yeah. if you would have asked me two years ago, I remember we used to have customers asking us, hey, what about solar panel recycling? Our answer kind of was, well, you know, your solar panel should be around for 30, 40, 50 years. That's way down the road. Don't worry about it. And that answer worked for a decade and it's just not going to work anymore. Right. And so I'm really, really excited to see companies like SolarCycle, companies like Q-Cells that are saying, hey, we're going to be proactive and we're, we're going to be prepared for this thing. We're going to make it work for us now and we're going to make it work for the long term. Uh, because we are a green industry, we do care about the environment, so it's it's uh, it's it's exciting. It's really neat to see that. Yeah, it certainly is. Super. Well, thank you, Larry. Appreciate your uh, advice. Great discussion here, and hopefully, we see the the industry uh, continue to move in this direction. Yep. Thank you, Warren.